answer into the kingdom of heaven. What's up, man? What's this about? This is about the Israelites. Deuteron uh, Daniel 7 and 27. This is about the Israelites. If you come over here, uh, our left, your right, you're going to see to your far left, your far right, the 12 tribes of Israel right there on that sign. This is about the Israelites knowing who they are and coming back to keep the God's commandments. What's your nationality? Uh, Indian. Indian. Okay, so right here we have a breakdown of the Israelites. You're talking about Indian like over there uh, overseas. Uh, no, Indian like, like Native American, but guess what? You want one of those signs. Take a look at it. You walk over here, but you ain't look at it. Tell me what's tribe to come from according to God, all right? We're going to read stuff. You said Jacob, that's our forefather. That's the nationality. What tribe you come from, all right? So, but the Daniel chapter 7, you're still thinking about it. I'm telling you, the answer's right there on the chart. Just read it. Why are we so hard here, man? Look, just read that chart and tell me when you see Native American or anything similar to it. And let me know your tribe, bro. I take pride in your tribe. Read. So, but the Daniel chapter 7 and verse 27. And the kingdom and, and the kingdom and the dominion. So, this is about kingdom and dominion. This is about rulership and power. Come on. And the greatness of the heaven under the whole heaven. Just read about the kingdom in Revelation 21. No, stay on your ass. Stay on your ass. You're good. We just read about the, the uh, kingdom coming out, uh, the kingdom being on heaven, but it's all tribes of Israel, what you all brought on, but you got to start keeping God's laws, come on. And the kingdom and the dominion and the greatness of the kingdom uh -huh. under the heavens, so all the power, the rulership, the dominion of this world shall what? Shall be given to the people of the saints of the Most High. You know who the saints of the Most High is? Do you know your tribe yet? Did you look at the sign? Are you still being rebellious? Huh? You say Ishmael. Israel, no, Israel is your nation. He's trying to say, here's the car. No, here's the car. He's trying to thank you, honestly. Here's the car. He's trying to thank you. He's trying to thank you. What you got to say? Souls? You got Souls 148? Okay. Then give me uh, First Samuel 15. Look up a little bit, man. Officer God, he gave you the answer. We, had to, we helped you out. We paid. And we brought us for real. We brought us for real. Souls 148 and uh, 14. Let's read who the Saints are. Let's just think against who the Saints are. Don't tell me it's the, uh, the, the football team in the world. Who is the Saints? You know? Okay, we're going to read it in the Bible. And I'll cover your head too if you can because you're here in the Bible. But it's the word of God. This thing powerful. Ain't nothing like it. Come on. So book of Psalms chapter 148 verse 14. He also exerted the word of his people. The praise of all his saints. The praise of all his saints. The word. The key word is saints. Come on. Even the children of Israel. The word even there means indeed. Even means indeed. He says indeed the who? Even the children of Israel. The children of Israel. The Israelites is God's saints. According to the Bible, all right? They're Israelites. What tribe are you from now, you know? Huh? Okay, so listen. If you said you're Native American, you will be from the tribe of Gad, thus said the Lord. The officer just gave you the answer. Touch the, touch the person for you. I don't know why. You've been there for five minutes and still be with us. I'm sure you will go and say about with them. You know, you need to Okay, okay we've got a mercy on it. It's cool. We all need some mercy sometimes. First time, each other, 15, verse 23. You got it? You there. All right. Book of First Samuel chapter fifteen and verse twenty three. For rebellion is as sin of witchcraft. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. So rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. That's how wicked that is. Back in the day, we was putting witches to death. All right, of the most slow before Christ, which we're under now, we was putting witches to death. We cannot be rebellious, bro. God falls upon that thing. That's, that's he hates that thing. We got to be the same way about it. We got to learn to humble ourselves and do what we told to do. You know what I'm saying? Watch this, Leviticus 19 and 27. So for the Leviticus chapter 19 and verse 27, you shall not round the corners of your heads, neither shall thou mow the corners of thy beard. We can't round the corners of our heads. Any idea what that means? Okay, so rounding the corner of your head is going into bald in your head. You ever notice how they always put some bald head celebrity in front of us? Everybody with a bald head, from Michael Jordan to Mike Tyson to Charles Barkley to Shaq. Uh, oh, Montel Jordan ball to say, no matter what area of entertainment you look into, they always push a bald head Israelite man on the screen for that image to be seen to other Israelite men and women for us to think that that's cool. But God said we can't do that. That's a sin. We didn't get from the top. You shall not round the corners of your head. We can't round the corners of our head, meaning we can't make it bald. Like today. Oh, back in the day, excuse me. What's up? How you doing, man? Oh, no, you good, you good. I'm just, uh, you know, you good. So, Mr. Clean was a, was a thing when I was small. You know, you know what I'm talking about? The little mopping glow thing. Brother is a, is a cartoon character. He had a bald head. That's as close as we came to knowing about a bald head. But just out of nowhere, every man, every Israelite man was shown with a bald head for some reason after that. Even Floyd Mayweather the day. I think he's growing his head back now. But for a long time, he was a bald head brother. What's the next line? You should not round the corners of your head. Neither should thou mark the corners of thy bed. You can't mark the corner of your bed. Meaning what? Any idea? Huh? Stay? Uh, it means you can't cut into your beard lining. You see, everybody here got their beard growing up the way it grows. 
Now you can trim it. You ain't got to have a big old long hanging down to the floor if you don't want that. But you can't turn it into like the creaky smashing, uh, the tent strap look, or the soul patch. Or you can't have them damn chops that the rock had when he was rusty back. You know, you can't do that. So let that thing grow and you can keep it nice and neat. But you can't cut into your bill. What's up, bro? What's your nationality, man? Huh? Well, pull over, come talk to me, you know you as well. Read? Go down to, uh, what's the next line? That's me. You should not make any cuttings in your flesh. That's going into what? You can't make any cuttings in your flesh. What does that mean? Huh? Like harm yourself, killing yourself. Like yourself. Yes, absolutely. And what else is another way you cut your flesh or another reason, another thing people do to cut their flesh? Think about it. You know it. So you cut yourself to harm yourself, right? Some people do that. They say it makes them feel better. That's a sin according to God. Doing drugs, that would be the same thing, right? Kind of puncturing, you know, the needle and all that. But what else? There's one more key thing that's big. For some reason, everybody want to do it. It used to be graffiti on the walls and, and on the cargo trains and under the bridge. Now it's on people's bodies. Tattoos. Tattoos is another way of cutting yourself. God said we can't do that. We should not be putting ink on our bodies. We, you should not make any cuttings in your flesh for the day. Nor print any marks upon you. I am the Lord. Do not prostitute thy daughter to cause her to be a whore. Let the land fall to her and the land become full of wickedness. You know what's crazy about Portland? I heard this is the number one place, uh, what we say it's, it's parish in New Orleans. Y'all call it uh, counties, I think. Counties, right? Y'all have counties. It's the number one county or something like that of, of strip clubs in the whole country. That's terrible. That is wicked as hell. We should not be a part of that thing at all. The strip clubs or order taking place where they're walking up and down the street, selling their behind, we should not have nothing to do with that. If anything, we should be rebuking it with the word of God. That's it. Like we're doing right now, passing our wives, letting them know. And some people honestly don't know about this truth. That's why we're here. And that's why we do the things that we do. But we should not be a part of that at all because that's going to cause the land to fall. Think about society today. Right? It's been normalized for prostitutes to be out on corners and doing what they do. For rich, wealthy people to travel with uh, secretary. Hey, excuse me, bro. What's your nationality, man? African-American? Hey, two minutes real quick. Let me show you you're not African-American. You're better than that. It's your Israelite, man. You got to repent. I asked for this brother learning. Said he from the tribe of Gad. So, like I was saying, according to, uh, according to the Bible, we can't have any part to do with any order in the land. So what's been going on is now they're moving towards letting kids marry grown-ups. There's young men that's trying to get the permission or the law pass to marry young boys. You see what I'm saying? That's what, that's, what, that's what the world is falling into right now. Come on, read it again. Do not prostitute that daughter to cause her to be a whore. You know how we aid in that? Unfortunately, when we let them go dressed unmodest outside, young ages with high skirts, being these little cheerleader programs, being a part of all these things where they're dressed immodestly. Why? Because it's a dog stick dancing and twirling in front of them for entertainment, not realizing everybody mind ain't right. And further, further, first and foremost, it's against the laws of God. Dogs, women need to be dressed modest. We got to make sure that we're being fathers and husbands and doing that for our women, making sure that they're dressed in a modest fashion. You understand? What's up? What's up to that? <laughs> Let the land fall to whoredom and, be, and the land become full of wickedness. You shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. I am the Lord. Then he says, you shall keep my Sabbaths and reverence my sanctuary. The word reverence means respect. You know what the Sabbath day is? Oh, great. Right now it's the Sabbath day. So what are you doing about the Lord's Sabbath? How are you keeping the Sabbath over? Really? You really? Okay, what else are you doing though? Because you're hearing the Bible. I'll give you that. I'm here. Uh, but what's the laws on the Sabbath day? Keep the holy, so therefore I'm holy, therefore you're sanctified. I agree, keep the holy, right? You're sanctified, but how? Let's dive a little bit deeper into it. How do you keep the Sabbath day holy? Can you give us anything specific? Uh, I'll give you this to say honor and camp. Honor and what? Honor and camp. Honor and camp? Honor, okay, I can't hear the second word. I don't know if it's the card stuff. But we're going to read it out the Bible so we all know how to honor the Lord's Sabbath day, like you said, all right? What you got? Exodus. Book of Exodus, chapter 20, verse 8. Yeah. Remember the Seventh day to keep it holy. Yeah. Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. Hold on. He said, Six days shall thou labor and do all thy work. How many days in the week? Seven. Seven days in the week, right? Okay, so one thing we can't do on the Sabbath day is what? We can't work. Now we're getting somewhere. Because we keep it holy, right? And uh, separate, like you said. Because that's in the Bible. So one thing is, thou shalt not work. When it comes to working for money, not doing it on the Lord's Sabbath days. Right? Come on. But the Sabbath day is the Sabbath day of the Lord thy God. In it, thou shalt not do any work. Thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, 
nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy stranger that is within thy gates. So what he just told us, I'm dealing with the same topic about work. What he said? The whole household. The whole household, all phrases. Nobody's allowed to work on the Sabbath, and you can't have nobody working for you on the Sabbath. So yeah. you can't be slick, because you might be a yeah. business owner or something. You can't be slick and say, well, I ain't doing work, it is a law Sabbath. I'm going to pay so-and-so to go get that done for me. No, you can't have that done. That means, if you can help it, don't have Amazon coming to your house dropping off no baggages. Don't have nobody coming to your house. Don't have the, uh, all the payments coming out of your credit card. If you can, on the Lord's Sabbath day, stop that. Pick another day if you can. Hey, request that it not be done on the Lord's Sabbath day. You see what I'm saying? As much as possible. As much yeah. as possible. Where you at? Exodus 35. Exodus chapter 35 and verse 3. You shall get enough fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. So wait. On the Sabbath day, we can't make no fires. What are you talking about now? What are you talking about now? One more time. You shall get enough fire throughout your habitations upon the Sabbath day. What that mean? Okay. So you can't make a fire on the Sabbath day. What he's talking about is cooking. Because remember at this time we was out in the wilderness. You think it's cold right now. You should have remembered we was out there. So out in the wilderness it was cold. He wasn't saying you couldn't make a fire in a fire pit to keep warm. He was saying don't make a fire to cook any food. So on the Lord's Sabbath day there's no cooking. We went into working, now we're going into no cooking. It's the second yeah. step, right? So that goes into what? You can't use a microwave today? No, you ain't got to pass. You got cold food you can eat. People always get mad. We tell them you can't keep cook on the Sabbath day. They get mad. Well, what, what I'm going to eat? What I'm, like you ain't never ate leftovers before. Like you don't know what a bowl of cereal is. Huh? Like you don't know what a pop tart is that you, ain't, that you ain't put in the toaster. You're eating this out the pack. Come on, man. You ain't cooked salads. Fruit. You ain't got to cook fruit to eat them. You know what I'm saying? There's plenty of things you can do on the Sabbath day to keep the Lord's Sabbath holy and uh, keep his name above all by just keeping the commandments because they're not grievous. Huh. So you can't cook on the Sabbath day. Don't put no food in the, in the window because it's hot outside when you want to say, well, I ain't using the microwave, but you're trying to be slick. <laughs> Being deceitful. No, don't eat the food up at all. Find yourself that you can eat cold. There's plenty of things out there. If you learn yourself, find a solution to your problem. It's that simple. So no working, no cooking. Read on. Nehemiah, chapter 13, verse 15. And in those days, so I and Judah, some turning wine press on the Sabbath, and bringing in sheep, and letting acid, and also wine, grapes, and figs, and all manner of burdens which they brought in Jerusalem on the Sabbath day. And I testified against them in the Sabbath, in the day wherein they sold victuals. So this is going back into all the people doing a lot of things to break the Sabbath day. First he mentioned they were straight letting the asses was going into work and preparing to go out and sell some things, right? Breaking God's laws was God has done it for these curses right now. That's the southern kingdom of our nation right there. With the brother with the whips on his back. It's a famous picture. This right here is the northern kingdom. Same tribulation, same afflictions going on with our people. Thank you, brother. We appreciate that, all right? I just want you to know, though, we're still dealing with the Sabbath day. So we was breaking the Sabbath day and, and preparing to go sell things. And what's the last part of that? I'm sorry. I testified against them in the day wherein they sold fiction and selling things on the Lord's Sabbath day. So we're not allowed to do what else on the Sabbath? We can't work, we can't cook, and we can't buy and sell. You got it, Nehemiah 10 to 31. Right. Go a few chapters back from where you at. So we can't sell on the Lord's Sabbath day. You see how simple this is? Right? But it's important, so it must be known. That's why I ask you, okay, how do you keep it holy? Because you're right. Now let's get a little bit more uh, in depth about it. Let's get a little bit more detail. Let's break it down some. Let's give the six. That's also a commandment of the Bible. Come on. This is the book of Nehemiah, chapter 10, and verse 31. And if the people of the land bring water or any victuals on the Sabbath day to sell. So the people of the land back then, we have the nations around us, right? Surrounding our borders of Israel as much as they could. And they will come and try to sell us things all the time and trade with us, right? Because they want them to make a profit. But on the Lord's Sabbath day, we're not allowed to do so. And they wouldn't even do the same things you see today back then. What do I mean? Like uh, the store across the street, the 76. Let's say the 76 gas is 529 every day. But on the Sabbath day, they drop that thing out for $4.25 or $4. Whatever the case may be, they give a sale on the Sabbath day. That's just to entice the Israelites to go buy some gas. You see what I'm saying? And that's going to be a heavy trial for a lot of people because they got to get some gas. You know what I'm saying? The money kind of tight right now. But we still got to keep going first. We're not buying on the Sabbath day. I don't care if it's 99 cents or one cent. We're not buying on the Lord's Sabbath day. You get what I'm saying? But stores do that thing. Everybody want to have a garage sale win on the Sabbath day. You go to the stores, your favorite store, Elvis, whatever, I don't want to give them no publicity. But you go to your favorite store right now, you know what they do? They make sales on the Sabbath day to entice you to buy. And then your boss, if you work for somebody, got the nerve to pay you the day before on Friday. That's all a setup. It's all, that's why it's called a system. They got many systems in place to keep the Israelites in sin. 
to keep us under their foot. We don't. That we will not buy it of them on this Sabbath or on in the holy day. So we can't buy it on the Sabbath day, the seven day Sabbath day, but there's also other Sabbaths, the holy days, the feast days of the Lord. We just celebrated these tabernacles, right? Uh, we got some more feast days coming up. You read about those in Leviticus 23. Yeah. So what's the things that we went over and discussed about keeping the Lord's Sabbath holy that we just went over? You remember? No buying, no selling. Okay. What else? That's one. So two. No working. Always. What else? That's for this. This is how you're doing that. This is how you're keeping it. Uh, keep referencing the Sabbath. This is how you're not working and you're not. What you said? Uh, selling. What else? No cooking, remember? No cooking, that's another thing. Now we'll read on one more. The book of Hebrews chapter 10, verse 25. Not for second the assembling of ourselves together, as the manner of some is, but exhorting one another. And also, if, but exhorting one another, and so as much more today as you see the day of work. So we gotta congregate. We gotta come together as much as we're able to. It's different things taking place, but we gotta honor God's laws and congregate as well on the Sabbath day. We used to scream black power while Heron was pushed. But at the end of the day, nothing's in vain. IUIC has been given a vision. The tents of Judah has risen. Many has attempted the mission. Minor murmuring, omitting, and missing the mark. Just reading that he had the flame of fire in his eyes gave us the spark. We on Paul's mission. We out on the road. Purple and gold. From Mexico, Cuba, Haiti, Ghana, Sierra Leone. 144,000 boots banging, concrete crackling. These are how men repented at heart. The scriptures is proof. IUIC, we deliver the truth.